kids, Karthus is a great way to come back later yep. on into the game. So it puts a bit of pressure onto Schalke to actually play a little bit more aggressively in the early game to try and utilize any advantages that you can gain in the mid game to snowball because the longer the game goes on, the harder it becomes to play against the Karthus. But we'll see how the rest of the composition shakes up as Schalke grab themselves the Gragas. Also great scaling jungler, very good engage setup, can offer early game presence. And they're actually just gonna stick to comfort. Oduamne, I think I can be pretty confident in saying that his most played this split has been the Aatrox. Uh, the dude he has, can be. Ha, the dude has played it whenever he has the opportunity to. And while I don't think it's the strongest top laner in the current meta, in the hands of Odo, he's only found success. It's the only champion he has won on this split. Oh. Two of his wins, or the, the two wins that Schalke have uh, on the Aatrox, has lost on it four times. But we'll ignore those for the point of statistics. We do want to uh, bring out the fact that Lorax only played Gragas once already this split as well. That was in the G2 game, of course, which Schalke won. He had a very good performance on it, ending with a... So right now you're telling me that Schalke's drafting themselves a winning draft right okay, now. Okay, I am also because Inax has played two games on Ophelios and yes. won one of them. Wow. So at the moment, they have the champions they have won on yes. so far. <laughs> we we'll ignore see all the losses that they currently have. Um, okay, mid lane's going to be Cassiopeia, because that's the only thing Abadage's won that hasn't been banned out. Okay, and support okay. is going to be either Rakan or Braum. Okay, okay. Well, Braum would be a good matchup with yep. the, or pair rather, with the uh, Aphelios and with Thresh already banned away. It's definitely leading towards that priority. Now the Rakan will be taken off the board. By Schalke. Yeah, so Schalke already limiting their own options. But for Mad, I'm thinking about what their priority must be. If they're the ones banning away the Thresh, it does suggest that they might be going for something a little bit more aggressive, like the Nautilus in the bot lane to try and threaten the uh, Aphelios. I think they should consider banning away the Braum really limit that jungle, uh, that support pool rather. But you've also got to think about the possibility of something like a Tarek. I think Tarek is a great pick yep. into the Karthus. We did actually see Mad play it themselves into the Karthus. Saw some mid miss timings from yeah. the ultimate from Kaiser. You but only have a half a second window to put your ultimate down as Tarek in that situation, but we will see as it has been taken away. Schalke with their final ban have a few options. Good luck to uh, isolate that mid lane pool of Humanoid a little bit more. Maybe get rid of the Zoe, get rid of the Rise. Those are your two Real humanoid-esque champions. Let's have a look, see what are they going to prioritize. Ooh, the Tristana suggests that they're thinking about a Zoe in the mid lane. Yep. Uh, Lucian, of course, can act as a strong answer to it. Would also give Humanoid a strong mid lane champion. But given that you are prioritizing the Karthus, suggest a little bit more. Not about ganking, more about, well, farming. That's yes. pretty much all the Karthus wants to do. So we're not going to see the strongest mid jungle duo. I like um, the Braum lock by Mad Lions. You uh, also get rid of the fact that you can unbreakable the bullet time, yes. right? So you're, you're removing a counter option from Schalke. So let's have a look here. Schalke's options. They could go for Zoe if they wanted to, if they wanted a safe blind pick. It's something that Europeans have played a lot. You also have the Cassio, as you mentioned earlier. Rise is also up, but with the availability of a Cassio, it's probably not the strongest option. For support, they're going to prioritize the Nautilus, which still just pretty well-rounded support. I think that given the number of support bans, your options are a little bit limited on the side of Schalke. Yeah, Schalke's uh, Dreams has only played four supports. Three of them have either been banned or removed, and Nautilus right. was the fourth. So he's going to lock that in. Azir. So they, all right, I'm pretty confident that we'll see uh, a Zoe pick now from Mad Lions. Oh, well, I was wrong. All right, fair you, enough. You can be that's... confident in things that are incorrect. Yeah, that's if The fair. world has that's, taught us that's, anything. That's very fair. <laughs> um, so I think Corky's also fine. Probably one of the least interesting mid lane matchups that exist in pro play, uh, Corky versus Azir. We've seen it multiple times throughout all esports history, all, e all League of Legends history, yeah. and uh, it's pretty much the same. Both of them like to not do anything. They like to farm, they like to scale. So we're not going to talk about mid lane this game. Okay. We're going to be talking a lot about, I mean, <laughs> so remember when I said I don't expect a huge amount of action early game? Based on the drafts, still don't really expect yeah, that. I don't either. Um, there aren't really that many lanes that either side can play through successfully, which then naturally gives an advantage to Mad Lions because they have themselves the Karthus, which means that if the lanes are just kind of happily sitting back, nothing is happening, you know, the Karthus is just free farming, maybe he gets the opportunity to counter jungle a little bit, then 
Matt is feeling pretty comfortable. So I think this cast this is going to be one of the big deciding factors in the outcome of this game. And of course, Shal Matt have a couple more options to be able to play side lanes because they are running the Corky, who I think is much more effective in a side lane than in the Zir is, which means that they'll also have one through one options later. And with the Karthus Ultimate, it makes playing into the side lane that much easier as well. So I think that Matt's composition overall just have a lot more options, but I wouldn't say that they are clear-cut favorites, because of course Schalke also have options of their own. Their scaling is pretty good, they have pretty good pick potential, their team finding is solid with the Azir. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this game. Uh, a lot on the line, especially for both teams, Mad in that ever so tight race towards the top yep. of the standings. I think this is a, a vital game for Mad to win if they're looking at their playoff contention, because up next, Tomorrow they have Rogue, next week they have SK Misfits, and then in the final week they play up against Fnatic and Origin. So you can say two of those games are probable wins, this one and then the SK game, and every other matchup is either against someone right next to them in the standings or just above them in the standings. It's a very hard road for MAD if they want to make playoffs, but right now they are sitting pretty in that sixth spot. We'll want to equalize Rogue at the 8-5 record if they win today, and Schalke very much the team to play spoiler. Okay, so we can see that the Azir is running the Electrocute. Um, I thought we weren't talking about mid. What yeah, happened? No, no, we're not going to talk about mid, but I do want to talk about runes, because okay. runes is always interesting. Because uh, Yamato is one of my favorite people to talk to about this, because he feels so passionately about the rune that you use depending on the matchup. Now, I'm not an Azir main, nor do I know the perfect rune for each choice. I just know the differences, right? Okay. So Electrocute obviously gives you a little bit more burst all-in power. Uh, a little, it helps especially with gank setups if you're looking for that kind of setup. Uh, and in certain matchups, just that burst is way more valuable if you can't go for consistent trades. So against the likes of a Corky, usually it's easier to go for those kind of short burst trades because it's just overall more beneficial for you. Um, we do see a bit of an invade from Mad we towards do. The, uh, the blue side, but it looks like it's actually going to be put off that. Ooh, I like the response from Lurok. He's actually gone straight to the Raptors. He's going to try and steal those away. Uh, the Karthus is going to go towards the red buff as well. So, one of the things about Karthus is that he's pretty blue buff reliant. So, by starting on reds, it's, it's not going to hurt his jungle clear. It's just it leaves him exposed a little bit because... Now there is the risk that his blue buff can be invaded on. You can see there is a bit of a ward sitting on top of the blue buff camp so that Karthus does have that protection available to us. The Observer is also highlighting that for us. And you'll also notice that in the bot lane, Inax and Dreams actually have the push because they were able to get to the lane first. They're in control of the wave. So this is something that Shadow has to be careful of yeah. because if you have priority bot and if we pan over to mid lane you'll see that Abadage also have that wave pushed and here we see the value of the electrocute when you go for those short trades you can actually do a lot of uh, early burst damage there is the risk of a steal but of course Lurox because of the early path that he had to take he went for Raptors actually went towards his top side so Shadow's blue is going to be safe but I think it's valuable highlighting some of the potential risks that you could have run into and if Karthus had lost his blue that would have been disaster in the early game really costs you a lot on the Karthus when you want to be spamming out those lay wastes. Of course, very good at taking single target camps is the Karthus because of the extra damage Honestly, you get from the Q. I think he's just good at taking all camps. Yeah, I mean, he is, he is, he is, he definitely is. Uh, but you're right, you're right. Of course, the bonus damage that you do get from the Q yeah. on single target is uh, very viable. One of the reasons why it makes his clear so fast, but he also has AoE with his E, which he can toggle on and off. Uh, which is extremely effective against Krugs as well. So I just think that he's one of the best power farmers in the game. I think the only other jungler that has a faster clear than him is Dr. Mundo. Uh, but yeah, it's... A he's... commonly seen yeah. jungler there, Medias. Yeah. I tried jungling him once. Wasn't fun. Killed myself in the jungle a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> so what Schalke are now doing is gaining control over the bot side of the map because that's where they have Pryo. You will notice that in the top lane, Oduamne was being pushed back by Arome. Now the wave is bouncing back towards him, and Odoamne just has to be very careful. Normally in this situation, you actually want your jungler to be pathing top, because with the wave getting ever so close to the tower, there's always a risk of a gank. And so Odoamne, he could be in some danger yeah. right now, because this is not the situation he wants to be in, but he has good sense to ward, but not in the, to the face of a Karthus. Will be forced away, can just use the Umbral Dash to get across that wall, or 
around that wall and gets himself to safety. You can see the damage that Shadow can do. Pretty darn effective. He'll get himself a Scuttle Crab that was once secured for Lorox on the bottom side. Lorox didn't decide to go for the level 3 back with the Predators. Instead, has actually done a full clear of his jungle, including that bottom side Scuttle Crab. Bear in mind, he still has an advantage over the Karthus because he stole away the Karthus' Raptors, which kept Shadow down a little level, but he's now caught up to that now at level 4. And so what you're seeing on top lane right now is why I hate playing top lane. Yep. So I tried playing top lane for a little while because the champions are so fun. Mordekaiser, Set, Dr. Quinn. Mundo. Yeah, Mundo. Like, these champions are super fun in top lane, honestly. But you're actually, like, really reliant on where your jungler is relative to where the enemy jungler is. And it's actually very easy in a long lane like this to have the wave frozen. And it's harder in bot lane because there are two people. There's that additional source of wave clear. But in top lane, if you overstep, if your wave gets frozen in an awkward spot, then it can be really challenging for you to break that without your jungler. And you could see that in that situation, Oduwamne, he's now at a CS deficit yeah. because he was zoned away from the farm. And that's because he just couldn't approach the wave because there was no jungler in the vicinity and his jungler was on the bot side of the map. But that's not to say it was Lorox's fault. Due to the early pathing, he ended up in this situation. But because of the wave state, Oduwamne ended up losing some of that farm. And um, that's why I personally hate playing top lane. And I have so much respect for pro top laners because you're so reliant on your jungler and the positioning of the enemy jungler as well. You should just play uh, top lane in my games because the jungler, the enemy jungler is always in bottom lane. Right, yeah. In my games, so. <laughs> Uh, with the perfect duo there, Vedius. Uh, Aroma's going to push the wave in, has hit level 6. He'll back, get off a cheetah recall, as we call it. Uh, it means he doesn't have to teleport back into the lane, but nor did Oduwamne. So neither teleport's going to be burnt there on yeah. the top side. So that's because the wave was bouncing towards Oduwamne. Now, Oduwamne didn't get the opportunity to set up a freeze because the wave was so big and he didn't have a wave. So he's just going to catch that. But now what he's doing is he's hard shoving the wave in, which because you're on Aatrox, you can do very quickly. And this may force Arome to either TP or at the very least lose some farm. So I like the response here from Oduwamne because now again, he'll get the wave pushing back towards him and like top lane is all about wave management knowing when and where to use your tp and i had a great conversation with oduwame last week in his matchup against whippo and he talked to me about some of the the mind games that go on where sometimes using a tp early can force your opposition to tp knowing when to cheat to recall like it, there's so much wave management involved in top lane. It's, it's honestly super fascinating. Um, and that's why it was great that we got Whipple on the desk and he gave us so yeah. much insight in the top lane. It's like a very complicated lane that often gets ignored because nothing happens yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, uh, honestly, it's a very fascinating lane. It definitely is. Uh, while we were chatting, Shalka did manage to secure the first dragon of the game, the Infernal, for them down towards that bottom side. Lorex is looking for a gank down here as well, but there's a ward that will spot him out. Has got a level advantage over Shadow, who's just been happily farming up on the Karthus. Should be up towards that level 6 pretty soon. And yeah, he's very close. Either after Raptors or certainly after Red, he should be able to hit that level 6 mark. And that's where things for a Karthus always get spicy. Um, because, of course, you can gank from anywhere on the map. So you can both farm and gank at the same time. Are we expecting to see Mad try and use that level 6? Because you've also got Humanoid who can get a package relatively soon. Are we expecting to see them try and set up a play? So... Here's the problem that MAD have. Their comp, or at least, actually, let's go back to the draft. In draft, they intentionally took the Braum away because they wanted to deny that bot lane away from Inax. Um, what, sorry, with the Aphelios. Yep. And it, uh, ooh, hang on, there's a bit of an invade going on. We might have to stop for a second. Shadow lower mana gets it. But top lane does have priority, so Shadow has a way out, and he is safe. We need to see Lorax actually going for the enemy blue buff right now. That's the correct play, because you can't obviously contest this, but you can trade, because you have Prio on the bot side of the map, and you have River Control. He's not going to so, do it. He's not going to do it, and... Like, he should be aware that his top side is yeah. just being stolen away right now. And Schalke's response is to try and collapse, but good vision control for MAD means that they're going to get away with this, and now they're going to lose their opportunity to steal the enemy blue buff away, so... Early opportunity lost there from uh, Lorox, where he should have tried to trade rather than answer, and now he's going to end up uh, paying for it because the Karthus will end up getting double blue. That control ward that was just cleared out by Lorox was the savior of Shadow. Wasn't spotted the first time Abadaga came around, and then Shadow was able to steal away the Gromp, steal away the blue, and get out because he knew when Lorox was on his way. Abadaga's just going to dodge away here uh, with the shifting stands, and now Mad 
Very strong Karthus is going to look to try and fight around the Rift Herald. So very quickly, the thing I wanted to point out was that Mads engaged is not actually the strongest. The best way for them to get a fight is around objectives like this. But top lane is pushed in favor of Shalka. Oduamne can move down first. The TP has come in from Abadage, and both teams posture around the Rift Herald. Shadow down to half HP already. Oduamne trying to come in. Abadage is going to come from the bottom side of the fight. Rift Herald down to 3,000. Arome jumps in, but the face breaker doesn't really catch too much. Dream jumping in on Kaiser as well. Shadow's down low. Has to use the smite really early as Arome gets the first kill. He's going to fall, but Rift Herald does go across towards Mad. Shadow secures it. Has the flash out of the back of the pit if he needs to. Humanoid being chased away. Shadow will use his flash. And in the end, it's a one for one trade. Mad get the Herald. Yeah, Mad walk away with first blood and the Herald. So it's actually a, a very favorable trade for Mad. They'll be able to catch the top wave as well. And the fact they're able to walk away with that objective, they only lost one member. Props to Arome. It really felt like you just gave away his life here to secure this objective for his team because. Keep your eyes on Arome in this situation. He actually just walks past Oduamne. He's like, I don't care about you. Interrupts the E from Lurox so that he still keeps Dogragus near him, allowing him to ult. And then Dream's flashing away to safety. Actually <laughs> only flashes into the fist of Arome. And of course, he ends up giving away his life. But his whole game plan was to keep Shalka distracted while Mad finished off the Rift Held. So it does cost them a couple of summoner spells, but they walk away with a valuable objective, which when playing against an Azir, very important. It allows you to play more aggressively against that tower, secure some of those plates, maybe even secure that objective, which against the champ like Azir can be obnoxious because of his wave there. And we can see Mad with a very slight gold lead early on here, only about 200, 300, but usually, as we said earlier, they tend to fall behind. Uh, Schalke do the same, both by about the same amount, usually about 1,000 gold behind also, 700 to 1,000 in the early game. Both teams pretty even so far as we see the bot laners up towards the top side. Neither team has completed a, a com uh, first completed item as the AD carries, but they are on their way towards them. You can see Mad trying to use the pressure that they have in the river through Shadow. They still have that Rift Hold if they want to use it, but they're holding on to it for the moment. So I've been thinking more about it a minute. Okay. And I think this game is getting more interesting the more I think about it because. Okay. We talked about how Mad don't actually have the best engage tools, right? The easiest way for them to start a fight is for Arome to find a flank or for Shalka to start an objective and then counter, Okay. right? So this means that Shalka will often have agency when it comes to starting objectives because Mad can't just start them for free. Because if they do, it's a lot easier for Shalka to engage than it is for Mad to engage um, then for Mad to re-engage on a team that's posturing around them in the objective now. In this situation, of course, they know that the bot lane is topside, they know that they have push-in mid and they have push-in bots, they got a favorable trade. So in this situation, they will be able to yep. get an easy objective. But as the game progresses, I think that Mad will either need to look for these free objectives or they'll actually need Shalka to start the, the objectives in order for them to find a fight. They're now actually going to look for a dive. Oduwamne doesn't have ult, doesn't have flash, doesn't really have anywhere to go as he dodges away from the Skittles. Humanoid is on his way down, but Lorux is there for the counter gank. Arome going in, look for the face breaker. The Infernal Chains aren't quite going to pull him back. He was able to just get out of the side of it, but he's knocked back underneath the turret. Now he's taking aggro, and with the Haymaker already used, he can't get the shield. Good counter gank there from Shalko in the bottom lane. Yeah, great stuff from Lorox. I feel like that the dive from Mad was just overforced. They wanted to try and get a little bit more gold on the map. Maybe they could have even secured the bot tower, but Lorox, last I saw him, he was top, realized that there wasn't a play available. After seeing the Drake fall, he was like, wait a minute, they could look for a dive onto bot side. The communication was clearly here from Schalke, and that means that they were able to respond in time. They noticed that Matt were waiting for Humanoid to arrive, but even if he did arrive, there was no minion wave for them to really set up a dive with. They were trying to take advantage of the fact that Abadage had gone back to base, but too little, too late. Great counter gank from Lorox, no flash available from Arome after the earlier Rift Herald fight. Now Schalke find themselves with a slight early gold lead. Plate did go down in the mid lane. No one there to collect it, so that's a little bit of gold, just gone to dust. However, getting through these towers is very important. Opens up the map a lot, and with an Azir on your side, it gives you even more pressure than it usually would, because you can put down a tower uh, where the enemy's tier, enemy tier one used to stand and keep that wave just pushing up and pushing up. Rift Held is used here in the top lane. Looks like only Oduwane is on this side of the map as Inex and Dream to switch down towards the bottom. They're going to try and match the pressure that is being put on here, but with the Rift Herald coming in, you have to expect that to take the turret first. So Nwamne secures himself a Gromp. 
And the Rift Herald charges in. There will be a lot of extra armor and magic resist here on this turret, but with Kazi there with the Rift Herald there should be a pretty easy take. Yeah, largely because it's t t uh, dictated by how many people are there. Um, yeah. And of course, because Kazi's by himself, Abadagi now getting very low. Caster Salty doesn't, doesn't even, even need, it. need it. Easy enough stuff there. Good kill from Mad Shadow. Yeah, but what was Abadage doing? I don't know. Um, he I mean, we're obviously, well. obviously going to get a replay to see exactly how that one broke down, but I am surprised Azia just shouldn't die. Um, yeah. <laughs> especially, I mean, like, don't get me wrong, Corky can do a lot of damage, but that surprised me. That uh, That's definitely surprising. But we'll have to wait for the replay. In the meantime, Shark is just trying to catch these waves now because they're a number down. This will give the opportunity for Romy to push in bot. Let's have a look, see. So Abadag already taken a bit of poke. Human Knight just goes for an for an all-in. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the, the problem for Abadag is I actually think that he used the stacks on his it. W yeah. to try and fast clear the wave, which means he then doesn't have a WE to get out. But Abadag still holds on to his flash. And I think he had ultimate as well. Which means uh, yeah, that the did. moment that the Corky jumped in, he could have just ulted away. He then could have flashed away, but clearly not respecting the damage coming out from Humanoid and um, yeah, ends up dying. And he does. First Requiem didn't really find much, but wasn't even needed. There's a 20 CS lead for, well, 15 CS lead for Shadow in the jungle. Otherwise, Honor's even. Arome is about 10 farm ahead. He's going towards the Trinity Force after getting himself a Bramble Vest first. And you can see Inax now with the Essence Reaver will start doing quite a bit of damage on this Aphelios. Scales very well as the game goes on. The Infernum, the Flamethrower. Just rattling through the waves. But Mad have got past the 15 minute mark with a gold lead here, Vedius. And they are looking for their second Rift Herald of the game. I guess right now, Schalke don't feel strong enough to try and contest these objectives. Um, they had their bot lane in the mid lane. They also had TP available on Abadage. They were in a position where they could have answered, but clearly suggesting, okay, right now, we don't feel that strong. But the game is only going to get harder. You've got to remember that Karthus in the later stages, very obnoxious. Um, the oh, they're TPing force. behind them. Abadage is going to run straight into the face of Humanoid, and now he might have to flash, puts down the Emperor to survive. The Blast code keeps Humanoid in place, but the final auto attack's not quite enough. Lorx has to flash the wall as well as Dreams goes in with the dredge line. Not sure he wanted that fight. Moonlight Vigil comes out from Inax. There's the route to stop what's used by Dreams. Good knock back by Lorox as he tries to get out of the back of the pit. And Schalke are able to escort Abadage out alive. I am surprised that Schalke were able to disengage from that situation, but they managed to pull it off. Uh, you oh. said it, Matt. Don't have the engage tools. They couldn't I follow mean, up the chase. For sure, but that looked more like a collapse rather yeah. than an engage initially. And the fact that they were able to barely get away was impressive stuff from the Schalke squad. Man now investing a lot of flashes, that Shadow Flash gone, Kazi Flash gone, and Kaiser Flash as well. So a lot of summoner spells used on the side of Mad. Same can be said for Schalke, but it will give Odoano the opportunity to get some gold into his back pocket. He was just free farming in the top lane, of course, multiple members of Mad on the bot side of the map, but Mad gonna trade this for an ocean drink. It feels at some point Schalke do need to take the imperative when it comes to these objectives, because you said it early on, Mad, don't really have as many engage tools as they'd like, so sometimes they're going to wait for Schalke to start up an objective and then collapse on them, try and yes. find the fight there. But Schalke haven't really started any objectives. They let Mad get the second Rift Herald, they just let Mad get another Dragon. And although the gold is pretty even, those extra objectives are going to start stacking up for Mad Lions. I mean, they're probably not too afraid right now. Um, they also recognize that they scale well themselves. And we yeah. talked about it, right? Like in terms of scaling, the thing that's going to be harder is this Aatrox value. Um, I think the Aatrox will get harder to play into the later stages of the game. However, I, I kind of took a lot of inspiration for what Grabs was saying on PGL. Aatrox can be used in a variety of different ways because because of his wave clear, it's actually very easy for him to get priority on a side lane, which means he can then flank and collapse. Now, when you have a flashless MF, that's like the prime target for a flanking Odoamne. He does have the teleport. So if Schalke can either get deep vision or Odoamne can use his wave clear and prio to be able to move before Arome can, then it's much easier for him to get onto the back line than say Arome. So it's funny because you have both top laners kind of looking for this flank to try and dive onto the enemy carries and shut them down as quickly as possible. Of course, the hardest part about the late game fights is if you kill Shadow, his ultimate is gonna come through and it's gonna devastate the team fight. Now, right now, 
it's not that scary. Yeah. Only a jungle item and an Oblivion Ward. That for sure, Shadow is not weak, but he's not at the point at which his ultimate will just single-handedly win your team fight. However, when he hits level 11, once he... He'll either go for a Leandris next, or he'll go for a Death Cap, yep. depending on how much gold he's sitting on and what he wants to prioritize. Uh, but yeah, I feel like that this cast is going to be a big factor when it comes to these late-game fights, and how will Shaoka look to play around that is going to be one of the big question marks. Mad Lions use the Rift Herald in the mid lane. They will break the tier one of Schalke. Three turrets to two now for them. I did enjoy watching the vision game play out down towards the bottom side as both Schalke and Mad Lions sort of vied for priority on getting vision in the Schalke jungle. In the end, Mad Lions won. They spotted Lorox on a ward and immediately used the Rift Herald in the mid lane to try and get it to charge through that turret. It's, uh, it's always a fun little game to play and to watch when teams of this caliber start to like play around vision and you spot how many control wards does a team have how much vision can they put down and how much can they sweep out in a short amount of time baron is now going to be available so the vision game was large they'd be invested around that area of the map um, in terms of speed i would say that both teams actually have quite a fast baron clear karthus you talked about how the single target damage is great for jungle clear it's even better for things yep. like drake and baron when you have a Corky as well, his single target damage onto objectives like the Baron, very good. But a Zia, three soldiers, huge amount of attack speed. A Felios, if he's able to stack up Chakrams, whew, he just <laughs> melts that purple worm. So uh, both teams have pretty fast Baron, which is why vision control is so important. Both right now contesting over the blue buff. Oh, do I mean, does find Kaiser by himself. We'll pull him back with the Inferno Chains, looking for the knockup. Blue went to Abadaga. Kazi popping the bullet time down, doesn't really get as much as you'd want. He forces Odawamne out of the fight, he forces Dreams out of the fight, but Schalke got the blue buff, and so Mad Lions will just back away. Lorax looking for the Gromp as well as Shadow comes in across the wall. And uh, the Gromp will be smitten, smoted, smited in the end. Mad Lions have to back away from their gentle foray into the Schalke jungle, and they uh, didn't really find anything. I just, I suddenly got reminded of a Road to El Dorado quote, which is, smite me, oh mighty smiter. Did you ever see the Road to El Dorado? Yes. It's one of my favorite movies. See, I think, you know, you have smite, you have smoked. Why not both? Yeah, but smite me, oh mighty smiter. It's yeah. just one of my favorite lines of the movie. And you reminded me of that. So thank you. Now Why I'm not both is also a Road to El Dorado quote. Wait, really? Oh, it is. That's, yeah, that's what I was going for there. Oh. I've had two really good jokes today, yeah. and, <laughs> and I both didn't appreciate of them just messed them. up on them. Yeah, but the first one I heard, and I that refused to acknowledge. <laughs> okay, so... Alright, well, yeah, so we went off on a bit of a tangent. No, because, I mean, like, we're in the mid-game, the game is slow, both these teams are waiting for the item spikes, I kind of want to have a quick look at their goal to see how much they're sitting on, because... Uh, let's have a look, see. So, Kazi probably has some to spend, the Karthus has some to spend as well, but... The problem is for a lot for both teams right now is they don't have enough to be able to finish all of their core itemization. So they're both kind of chilling. They're waiting back. They're relying on the items to come through very soon. And so there's just a lot of farming going on. Schalke have priority around the uh, Drake for now. And they also have a lot more vision control. There's this one ward just below Odoamne that our observers highlighted when we toggled the vision. And this could be used as a flank, but instead, yeah. Mad saying, you know what, we'll just trade it for pressure in the top lane. And uh, that's looking very good for them as I think that that tower is about to be taken. It is. Humanoid's going to get it pretty easily by himself. Do want to remind everyone of exactly where these two teams stand. Of course, Schalke sitting at 2 and 10. If they lose two games, they're out of playoff contention. But Mad Lions still very much in that playoff race. Currently, sole sixth position because, of course, Rogue played earlier today. If they win, they match Rogue. If they lose, it becomes a lot closer in that battle with XL. Only having a one-win cushion is very difficult. And as we said earlier there, Rest of the games that Mad have are not the easiest in the world. You're playing Fnatic and Origin in the final week. For sure. The, uh, Mad were able to get a big win against Fnatic and I think G2. They did, right? yeah. Um, both are very valuable in keeping them towards the top end of the standings. And I mean, we've definitely had quite a lot of debate around who's stronger, Mad or XL. But of course, because of those wins, that's why Mad is sitting above XL. But XL actually hold head to head record over Mad, sitting with a 2-0 record over them. So those two teams are definitely very close in the standings right now. But XL have to play through uh, G2, Schalke, and, sorry, G2, Origin, and Fnatic. And Misfits. And Misfits. So like their path is definitely harder than Mad's is. And uh, 
But that's why these wins are very important for Mad, because if you know your opponent and the person who's competing against you has a very difficult schedule, you then can't afford to drop games against teams that you should be stronger than. Yeah. And uh, that's what's so scary about Schalke. They're, they're great at, as we said, making your life difficult. And uh, they definitely don't go down without a fight. And of course, they still have an opportunity to make it to playoffs. They have to win pretty much all of their games. All but one, I believe, all is there. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely an uphill battle. But we'll see if they can do it. We've seen miracles happen in the uh, European scene before. We have, we have. Schalke, this would, I mean, it would be a huge miracle for them. Lost the first seven games they played. <laughs> to come back from that would be something truly special. But for now, they will be focusing on this specific game. As you said, the uh, Baron is live. Last week, Schalke were able to get a soul, a Baron, and an Elder and still lose the game against Origin. I'm sure they'll be hoping, obviously, that that doesn't happen today. And we are starting to see those second items come out. So both AD carries now in a very strong point. You've got the Infinity Edge, Essence Reaver finished on Kazi, the Essence Reaver and the Runans, and it appears the beginnings of an Infinity Edge for Inex. Slightly ahead, just, you know, the Cloak of Agility versus the BF Sword. But uh, it's still going to be a very close battle when these two teams do butt heads. I just... I just find it funny because, I mean, we have talked about it, but I want to remind people, Mads engage, not the strongest, yeah. but Schalke are probably also a little afraid to just force fights because they recognize how strong Akarthus is and will be later on into the game. So I'm really curious as to how, like, <laughs> conflict will be resolved because when Mad is like, we want to fight, Schalke's going to be like, you know what? No! No, we're good. No, we're, 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 we're good. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we just kind of have a stalemate right now as both teams just kind of look at each other, but Humanoid, the playmaker. Behind enemy lines. Odo Omni and Dreams. Yep. They're pinging. <laughs> they know. They definitely know. Nothing happened. Cool. It's fine, though. Odo Omni just going to face check that. He will now have information on Humanoid as the bot side map is cleared from wards. There's a huge amount of vindication as a player there, though, when you're like, I think someone's in this bush, and you play defensively, and then you see them walk over a control ward a yes, little while later. Yes, it's like, yeah, yes. yeah, game sense, A+. Plus. My spidey senses were, in fact, successfully tingling. tingling yeah. yes. That was one of my favorite parts of the uh, most recent Spider-Man movie. Where it's like, oh, it's your, your Peter Tingle. Your Spider oh, Tingle. The, the Peter <laughs> it's Tingle, really yeah. funny. Uh, can, we, can we not call it that? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no it's your Tingle. It's your special Tingle. tingle. It's, it's great. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so now... Do I have a Vedi Tingle for when Medi is nearby? Oh, really? Yeah, it's used as a deterrent so I can escape. Cool. <laughs> I know why you left the house now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the crowd <laughs> awed you! They awed you! Okay, but yes, things are happening. Baron has been started by Mad. They're trying to pull Shaku into a fight. They're the ones engaging here. Looks like they're going to disengage from it. I think they wanted to sneak that yeah. rather than actually go for the fight, given as to how quickly they disengage. Notice how they kept Humanoid in the bot lane as well. So Mad are utilizing their full one right now. We talked about how they do have split push options. You can keep this Corky in a side lane, and it's going to be difficult for Oduwami to be able to deal with. They can do it They're again. back on it. Here we go. If at first you don't succeed, Mad Lions have started it up again. Lorax and Inax, the ones to check. Dreams on his way as well. Here they go. 7,000 HP left on the Baron. Mad starts to disengage. Aromi down to half HP just from tanking this up. They don't know where Humanoid is. Schalke did not know where Humanoid was, but Mad Lions disengage and stop anything happening. So what were the results of that? Aromi stayed with his team which means that he's not getting more farm, whereas Odoamne matched Humanoid, and now he's sitting at level 16. They're also able to confirm a mid-tier one, and Arome, while looking for a TP flank, will he's get spotted, spotted he's out, spotted, he's spotted. as Schalke goes straight for the Ocean Drake. So this all benefited Schalke because Abadage is still level 16. Schalke going to walk away with an objective advantage, experience advantage, gold advantage, Inax level 14 as well. Like, mad feel pressured into starting this Baron, and. I kind of just want to backtrack again to what we've been talking so much about in this game. Mad have limited options. To, ooh, Abadagi not quite able to land that ultimate. Humanoid just going to be able to jump away. Humanoid still down to half HP. Odo Omni steps forward. There's the bullet time. Abadagi just about surviving. Is the Requiem enough? Dodges away from the show stopper. But now Lorox is going to pay with his life. Haymaker finds him. A punch to the back is enough. 
and Mad Lions now have the option to turn to Baron. And this was a crucial mistake from Abadage. He thought that he could find a pick onto Humanoid, but then after failing, he overcommits to the play, baiting his teammates into trying to force a fight, which then allows Mad to turn it around, find a pick, and now they can start off the Baron without Schalke having their jungler available. Shalko might want to take this fight though. What have they got? Oduwamne doesn't have all. Inax has his. Dreams has his. Matt Humanoid off towards the side, sitting on the package, looking gotta get to get in. There. in. You gotta get in, you gotta get in, you gotta go. Shalka pull the trigger on the engage. There's the Moonlight Vigil onto Shadow. He's down to half already. And there goes Odo on the front line. Near Burnham's gonna rip through Matt. If only Inax can get the damage down, but he doesn't have enough. Shadow surviving Mad. Just about alive on the back line as Humanoid jumps forward. Locked up. Arome though with a great face breaker into Haymaker keeps himself alive. Abadaga goes in. This could be it. This could be the Pentamist. It's not! Mad Lion's able to lock him down and take him out. A great fight for Mad. So many low health members in the back of the pit, but Schalke cannot clean it up. Mad walk away with the Baron, and now this opens up so many options for them. We can see here Humanoid. This is very greedy from him trying to steal away the Raptors without pressure anywhere else, but he's just barely able to sidestep it. Here, the overcommitment from Abadage, he's thinking that Odo and Lurox can help support the collapse, but they don't actually have Pryo on mid. That means that Kaiser and Arome are able to get the collapse first, and of course with the Karthus ultimate, it doesn't matter if he's there or not, he's always going to offer value with his ultimate, and with the jungler dropping, that's it, he's gone. Numbers advantage. Matt then used that very quick Baron to be able to melt this one down. You can see Inax flashing in, getting the damage down, and now we need to see Abadagi just going in, go for the Hail Mary, see if he can win this fight. He actually gives time for Romy to come out, assist, oh, uh, assist Humanoid, rather, with the kill, and then misses Kaiser with the ultimate. Kazi ends up not dropping as well. Abadage wasn't able to make the play happen and Mad walk away with the Baron and now so much more control over the game. Humanoid doing such a good job of just being a distraction, being a deterrent towards Schalke in that last fight. And as you say, Mad, total control of this game now. 6,000 gold ahead. Two minutes on the Dragon, it would be soul for Schalke. But Mad aren't really going to let them have any of the map until this Baron buff falls off. A minute left on it, 4,000 gold already gained. Shadow down towards the bottom lane with a Rome, Mad. Might just path over there, looking to break all of the tier two turrets of Schalke. Open up that map just that little bit more. Schalke, do you find an engage? Dream still has ult, so does Inax, but there's no flashes on Schalke at all. Whereas Mad have Shadow and Humanoid who can get out of a fight at a moment's notice. They need to keep that pressure up in the mid lane. They do have that wave, which Inax is now catching. With numbers advantage, they can force onto this tier two, but they don't want to overcommit. They've taken two towers. Oh, Humanoid choosing not to reset, gonna use some of his pokes still. Does of course still have the teleport. They've but got 30 seconds left on the Baron buff, they're just trying to milk it for all it's worth. Yeah, but there's no wave in mid, so they can't really commit to this because Shaka can now keep all five members in the bot lane to hold the line. So, uh, man, make the wise decision, they disengage. They're happy though, 7k gold lead now. More money in the bank to just spend which they're going to turn into some pretty powerful items. Not to say that Enax is not strong himself, but of course, you just look at the difference between the mid laners. Fully completed Infinity Edge, a 2k gold advantage in favor of Humanoid. The top lane has now equalized out as well, and the Karthus really is online. He's about to hit level 16, the Leandries is finished. Karthus is going to be looking for some lives to claim. So Abadag is just about to tip over to 1,100 gold, which means he's going to have that finished death cap for the next fight if he goes back and spends it. He'll want that because you're fighting over the the so ocean soul. Shall, yeah, it, exactly. Shaka have two options now. They can reset and then look to contest or they or can stop. look to trade. Yeah. They have to acknowledge that, of course, this isn't the ocean soul. So they're fine losing another ocean drake. But it's one of those things where I'm like, can you really afford to wait any longer? Like, if you base now, you can have the Death Cap on Abadage. You have three items on your top lane, you have three items on your AD carry. Maybe now's your best opportunity to actually go for a fight. Abadage you know? does still have the TP if he wants to come in. Humanoid has come back no, to they try can't and defend. This. Like, yeah, you can't now. You just, just look at the vision. There's too much, like, there's so much control in favor of, uh, of Mad right now that Shaka would be walking in blind and they can't afford to risk it. So they're going to trade it for the top tier two. Not the end of the world, still another Ocean Drake to play for, but of course it's going to be the Baron. That's going to be the next point of contention. And with the death cap being completed, of course, Abadage has another opportunity to redeem himself for what has been quite a few mistakes in this game. 
And uh, he's really the late game insurance now, yep. unless uh, Inax can also find uh, another stellar performance. Of course, his damage was pretty significant in that last team fight, but the moment he flashed in, he also made himself vulnerable to enemy attack, which Mad were very quick to take advantage of. See, he's got that Hex Drinker now just to try and add a little bit of mitigation from the Requiem, from Humanoid's damage as well, but it's so hard to do. It's so difficult to stop a Carthus Requiem just wrecking you as an AD carry. And you said it earlier, Vedius, Schalke are just, they're exasperating to play against sometimes because they are good at just making you work for every second of the game. And they've done that again here. They made a couple of mistakes, but even after that, they haven't just turtled and died. They have pressure in the side lanes. They're getting turrets. They're getting a little bit of gold where they can. And that gold lead, it did balloon up to about 8,000 at one point. Now it's down to about six. They're going to keep pressuring in. It's only a Rome here to defend, but they decide they don't want to go for it. So I think Schalke's strat now is to actually not try and fight and to instead go for almost a G2 approach where they go for a split push style. Yeah. They have double teleport and Oduwame and Abadagi and maybe their logic is, okay, let's not fight them because in reality, they actually can't force on us. So let's instead just try and play more towards the side. Like maybe we can find a pick. Maybe we can punish Mad for overextending, but Mad's not biting. They're not taking the bait. This is going to give them full control over this objective. The Observers just highlighted for us the amount of vision control that MAD do have over the entrances to the jungle, and you can see it on your screen right now. And the river is also entirely clear of vision from Schalke, so this area is dark. Thank you once again, Observers, for helping us highlight this. They're going to push in mid, make their way back towards the Baron, and they're going to look to rush this down. Karthus is level 16. Lurox is level 13. So the smite damage alone is going to be dramatically different. Here we go. This is going to be it. What will Schalke do? Will they look for the split push? Will they look for the team fight? I would argue it's just been oscillating back and forth in this top lane. Shadow actually down to about a third HP here, but the Baron already down to 4,000. Here comes the teleport as Schalke look for it. Lorax gets control ward in the back of the pit and Mad have to disengage. But Mad get the TP out from Abadagi, which is still a big win. Now they look for the re-engage. Oh, Lorax takes half his health from a single auto attack from Humanoid. Humanoid takes nothing in return. A Sentinel goes down, but that's not going to be enough. Schalke now do have mid prio. They can push in, but Humanoid is here to stop it with the static shiv. That wave plays even stronger than normal on the Corky. Level 18 versus level 13, now 14, but you can see how powerful levels can be on top of the fact that a uh, humanoid is quite fed. Now he has his eyes set on Abadage. Doesn't break the Banshees, which could be important. Mad trying to get that mid prior we always talk about. You can use it to push in towards the side. Oduwamne realized that Mad would be coming across here, so got a little bit of damage down onto Kaiser, but not enough. Now, if we could bring the items back up, we'll notice that a lot of the vision is now disappearing. Control wards don't exist for either party. The supports have run out of uh, stacks as well. Only Kaiser with one ward left, which means that this vision fight can't keep going on because the number of resources to wave for is limited, so a fight's gonna start. Shadow down to half, the root comes out. There's the knockback, but Shadow goes the opposite direction. Orome is trying to jump in to the back of the fight as Kazi steps forward. Orome holds up. Humanoid fighting against Oduwamne off towards the side of this as he's about to fall, but he goes Gordon just at the right moment, just at the right second, and Lorax goes for the engage. He pops his stopwatch too as in that stepping forward. Kazi not pulled back by the chains, he's able to survive, but man. Mad, split up. Schalke gonna step back, reset, reassess, and they find a kill in what could be a very important fight. They don't get too much out of it, Bedius, but it shows that Schalke are still here to party. Yeah, they're, they're still keeping the game surprisingly even, especially when you think about the situation that they find themselves in with Lorax being so underleveled. Let's have a look at this engage. So we talked about how the vision resources were running out and some good poke damage comes out from Abadage onto the uh, Karthus and then a great ultimate from Inax actually locks them up. But the response is a little bit slow, which means that they can't immediately go onto Shadow. He's too hesitant to use his ultimate just yet. And to be honest, it probably won't just melt through the Schalke lineup. So he hesitates, he holds on to it. This gives Schalke the opportunity to find that pick and then look for these slow re-engages. They then don't overcommit because they know the Ocean Drake is spawning in a minute's time. But it is Mad who once again have control over the area. Schalke do have the Scuttle Crab. That will give them pretty effective vision for the moment. They know that Humanoid is there. They know they have a little bit of safety. Schalke have... Oh, TP, 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 TP. 
Here we go, here we go. Mad Lions looking for the TP flank as Aromi does have the showstopper. But already the Ocean Drake's gone. They get the soul. It's secured by Mad. Lorox in the pit is melted in the heartbeat. And here comes Aromi. Showstopper to all four of them. Kaiser jumps forward with Glacial Fisher. It's all on Inax. It's all on Abadaga. You've got to turn this fight around right now. Otherwise, with the Requiem coming out, you're just going to get taken out. Humanoid dies off towards the side. It's Inax and Odawamne who get the kill in a 3v4. Ashalka have to do something here because Mad Lions are going to start regenerating very quickly. Yes, they certainly are, Medic. Mad was so quick to rush that Ocean Drake down that Schalke never had an opportunity to respond. Now with four people alive, Arome and Kaiser can tank this one up. They're just going to melt through the Baron and Mad will put themselves in the favorable position again. But Inax is here. He doesn't have the ultimate available. Does have Flash. Inax has the Cleavum and the Infernum. He could shred through Mad Lions in just a second. And here he goes. Kazi trying to put the damage down. Kazi wins that 1v1, but here comes Abadage. Now, there's hints that they're flanked. Odawamne jumps back into the pit. Arome almost falls, but look at the healing on him. The Ocean Soul does so much. Abadage, you shuffled him the wrong way. Kazi able to survive for the second, but here comes Inax. That's one. They're looking for more. Inax, are you going to step forward? Because Odawamne is there by himself. Cleavum doesn't hit from long range. Rome still tanking up. Shadow able to get back, and it looks like Schalke won't be able to find anything more out of this. They got three kills, they denied three Barons, but Mad still get out. Ooh. So a tense team fight around the Baron. Inax, Abadage, and Odo doing what they can. If they could have killed Mad here, they could have stalled the game out even longer. But Mad still walk away with two Baron buffs. The Karthus now has the death cap completed. Very tense game, and we can see how Schalke are making this difficult for Mad. So we have to start back with the Ocean Drake. Arome finds a TP flank, but honestly, this TP gets interrupted because you can see the Ludens Echo proc ends up interrupting his home guard, which means he can't suddenly close the gap. But then he finds Odoamne. He's able to shut him down as the Gragas is diving into the pit and has no options. Really good lockup here onto uh, Humanoid. The damage combined from Inax and Oduame is enough to find that kill. They get a huge shutdown. But with Mad having four members alive, they rush the Baron down very quickly. Now we see Inax just dishing out a lot of damage. Mad is a little indecisive as to who they want to focus, but Kazi's focus is clear. I need to kill Inax. He ends up flashing out, getting away to safety. Kazi actually comes back into the pit, and you think at this point he's going to die. Babadaga wants to try and separate him and Kazi. But all he actually does is it gives Shadow the opportunity to then find that pick onto him. And then the Ocean Soul regeneration here. Also, Inax too low to really be able to get involved in the fight. Arome gained health during that portion yeah. of the fight. Mad was able to disengage, walk away with two Barons, and now we'll see if Schalke can hold the line. Very long, drawn-out fight. More items are being completed. Abadage, though, hasn't actually picked up anything extra, whereas we're at full build for Humanoid. And you can see Humanoid's not afraid to take these trades because he's like, hey, bro, I have the Ocean Soul. I'm like all that watery goodness. I'm super hydrated. <laughs> Hydro homies. So he's just going to keep on getting the poke. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I know. It was funny. Thanks. But I'm focused. So you might wonder why we talk about how powerful the Ocean Soul is. Kazi is regenerating 300 health per four seconds upon damaging an enemy. It's actually just crazy. It's so much healing. It's so difficult to burst people Where's down. Where's the Morello? It's not hit. No execution is calling either. No I healing think, reduction right now. I think now. building Morello because the enemy might get an Ocean Soul is a little bit. No, but now you need one. You definitely do. You definitely it's, do. The healing is too strong. Well, we'll see if anyone changes up their build. No grievous wounds on Schalke as of but, yet. Baron's gone. Yeah. Mad got, what, I think one tier two in the top lane. If they hadn't already, no, they'd no, they'd already, already got, got, got that before, yeah. so they got nothing. So, what we're seeing is Mad's comp kind Can't of struggles <laughs> to kind of actually close the game. So, like, we're full LCK right now, bro. Like, this is this is prime time LCK in LEC, where kind of you have this constant stalemate, and it's just going to be unless someone gets an ace or like a TP backdoor, or like it's going to be a crazy ending. It's going to be crazy. You know what I love, uh, Kaiser has adapted his build for the Salt. Oh, he has a Warmog's yes. armor on Braum. It gives him an extra 99 healing from his total health. Wait, 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 but he's not at 3k yet. Yeah, but it, so it's not about the regeneration, it's about the flat health that you get from it, because oh. Ocean, Skull, Ocean Soul scales with max health. Of course, okay. I mean, of course, I'm, I'm not sure it's the optimal optimization. Wait, but, if, but also if he buys, what, like a Ruby Crystal, that'll yeah. probably put him over the edge as well, right? Yeah, so. it would. Damn, all right. Big brain plays. Late game support builds. <laughs> Honestly, having two items of support is Ooh. late game support build. Morello on Abadage. Oh, and we have the healing reduction. Okay, but Elder Drake in a minute's time. 
Will this be the deciding factor? I talked about this with Dracos last week. Karthus plus Elder Drake, one of the funniest interactions <laughs> I think exists in the game. A lot of people think it's annoying. I think it's hilarious. It's like, Here are some lasers it's and just, some lasers it, on it, your lasers. Yeah, but it's like Dracos described it as it's like a child's fantasy where like I want lasers from the sky and I want a dragon to breathe on them. <laughs> it's I love the interaction. I think it's super strong. And Shadow is of course super strong himself. Dreams. Could but be do I danger. Okay, Humanoid has the Valkyrie, so can just get away. You can see Mad up pushing into this jungle, denying Vision, getting as much control of it as they can. Thank you, Observers, for highlighting that Shao can really see nothing. Aduomne is going to realize there's a control ward in there. Arome is coming in from that bottom lane, trying to get the wave pushed up. The problem for Shao is they can't even get mid prior because Humanoid is holding that. Arome is pushing in bot lane as well, so it's impossible for Mad to even approach, and Shadow can just solo the Drake, to be honest. It does it so quickly on the Carthus, especially at this point in the game. I like the Shalker have invested their four into mid lane to try and secure mid priority, but Mad are contesting them on this subject. Alt goes wide, crucial, because Inax had the Graviton, won't have that CC option available, and now Arome, he's the one to move first. Oduamne stuck behind him. You gotta fight Mad this. starting off the Elder. Here we go, this is it. Elder. Getting chunked out pretty quickly. Lorox tanks a Winters by Orome. Looking for the steal, but Lorox is nowhere near this. That Elder Dragon's almost gone, and Mad will secure it. It's Kazi who takes it. And now Mad trying to disengage because they know in just a second, in just a moment, they can go back in. The Elder Dragon burst will be absolutely devastating for Schalke. And uh, Mad Lions, they can just wait this one out. They can just wait for a moment. Let Orome push in bot. Let mid lane wave come back to them. Schalke looking down the barrel of a possible Baron Elder team. It's going to be very difficult for them to fight back. Yep, the pings are coming through. Schalke definitely don't want to fight mad now. Ocean Soul combined with Elder Drake. Oh, the TP, TP flank. Arome with the TP flank once again. Humanoid goes in. He almost dies. He's shut down. Maybe that's what they needed, but Abadage is being suppressed. Not back with the showstopper. And Arome smites him with the power of the Elder Drake. Inax in the middle of the fight is doing so much. He gets the Infernum. Kazi's down. Kazi's down. Arome trying to get him with the face breaker again. But Kaiser, look at the damage. Look at Shadow. He just takes down two in a moment. And now Odawamne is running for the hills. Arome and Kaiser can chase him down, but I wonder. I wonder if Odawame can disrupt this Baron because that's what he's got to do. Oh, Schalke, they had the best case scenario team fight, but the power of the Elder Drake is what swung it back into the favor of Mad. Inax just dropped below the threshold and then he got blown up. If he could have life sealed, if he could have stayed in the fight a little bit longer, then Schalke could have actually won that fight and secured the Baron, but you're seeing the power of this late game objective. Mad will use their Elder to secure themselves the Baron, will maintain control over the game, but such a promising team fight for Schalke. The fact that they were able to just blow up Humanoid and Kazi right off the get-go was so valuable to them, but then of course the follow-up damage dealer of Shadow is what kept Mad in the fight. So let's have a look at this again. You can see that they break the shield from Abadage and Humanoid, oh and the TP flank is coming in from Arome. So this is where Mad feel the confidence to engage. So Humanoid uses his W, gets hit double crit by Inax. Then they're trying to interrupt on Abadage. He's able to get his ult off though. And look, Kazi's just been abandoned. His support is not there peeling for him and Shadow can only do so much. But this is where Shadow comes in extremely valuable. Look at Inax, just drops below the threshold, blown up. Jungler, blown up. Mid laner was killed just as this second half of the fight was ensuing. Look at that damage from Inax. Yeah, I mean, Inax it's a is, battle between Inax and Shadow. It, that's all it is, these, these fights. He's, he's becoming so crucial in these fights. And uh, oh man, you can see how get tense the game still is. Mad now, still yet to break into the base of Schalke. We're approaching 50 minutes. Medic, I'm sure we're getting close to the longest game of the split. I'm sure we right are, Vinny. I'm sure we are. If you could just keep talking for like. In three minutes, yeah. this will in fact be the longest game of the split. Oh, interesting. I could have found that out. Yeah, in three minutes, buddy. But I just, I find it 50, funny. 50, 49. We talked about how before. this was going to be an interesting game. We said it was going to be closer than people perhaps expected. And a lot of it came down to this comp where we, like, I was fascinated yep. as to how these fights were going to play out. And we've seen how close they have been between the two teams. Kazi's got double infin on the MF now. Full six item build for Inax. Went for the Trinity Force as his final item goes in with the Moonlight Vigil. The Inferno really doesn't do too much. 
uh, didn't hit Shadow. That's the target you're looking for at the start of these fights. Humanoid pushing in mid lane. Abalage is about to go back to base. I wonder what he's going to buy. Has a blasting wand. Maybe looking for a void staff because there's a bit of magic resist on the Mad Lion squad. We'll see. Kaiser. Pull back with the chains. It's going to be pulled back with the chains. Is this it? Is the, the connection they found? The Death Touch comes out and one pick is all that the Shalka wanted out of now. The support is dead and still Mad Lions have not been able to break the base of Shalka. Wow. Shalka is still holding the line and now the audience is coming alive for Shalka. Oh man, this team is able to make the game so much harder for their opposition. And they introduced Inax, they introduced Lorox to the roster, and ever since then, we've been talking about how Schalke just seemed to have slowly gotten better, but their mid to late game decisions just seem to be so much on point, and like they, again, they punish the mistakes that you make. Such a small overstep from Kaiser, but immediately they're yeah. quick to catch you out on it. And now they keep the game even once again. We're waiting for another Elder. We're waiting for another Baron. I mean, Elder doesn't stack like it used to, Medic. Yeah. This Elder's going to be just as strong. Obviously, it's still very powerful. <laughs> Incredibly powerful. But it gives Shalka another opportunity. And you can see Shalka are now the team pushing forward. Shalka are now the team getting offensive vision into the base of Mad, into the face of Mad. And uh, the Mad Lions, they're looking at a game that they should win. They were favorites coming into the game. They are the team much higher up in the standings. And when you're in that playoff race, when you're looking for sixth spot, fifth spot, these are the games that really matter. These are the games that can really swing things. If Schalke take a win here, they will be, well, denying perhaps Mad the chance to go to playoffs. Elder Dragon, 46 seconds away. A 10,000 gold lead, but really that doesn't mean too much right now. Kazi has the shield from the Bloodthirster, can put a lot of damage down, as can Shadow. So let's have a quick look at the map state right now because you'll notice the bot is being pushed in favor of Shalka. Mid being pushed in favor of Shalka. The Sun Disk also going to guarantee that priority. If we could just have a very quick look at top lane, we can tell which direction it's going in. I think it's slow pushing in favor of Mad right now. But Mad are going to use their five members to be able to push in mid. Abadage and the squad, though, still holding on to this mid lane. Good poke onto Kaiser. Will regenerate, of course. But that bot wave still pushing underneath the tower. Elder Drake spawning in five seconds. This is a great situation for Shalka right now. Kaiser over the Warmog's proc level, though, so he's going to regenerate even quicker. Even when the Elder Drake, the Humanoid gets pulled back. Death Charge comes out, only hits onto Humanoid. There's the showstopper from Morome as the fight really begins. Inax in the middle of the bullet time and already Dreams is done. And now Shalka have to fight a 4v5. Kazi down to half HP. But can Shalka do it? Can they find the fight? Because Matt now have mid prio. Shadow down to half. Kaiser stepping forward. Odoamne is going to jump across the wall. He's caught out as well. The knockback comes up. Inax has started up the Elder Dragon. It looks like Shalka might give up their inhibitor and their inhibitor tower to get this dragon, but Kaiser, he's going to act as a disruptor. There we oh, go. Oh, they're going to try to interrupt the bases. There. They're going they're for going the base for race. They're going for the base race, Vedius. Can this is they quick. do it? Mad so quick on it. They're pulling the trigger. Inex trying to get back. Kaiser's trying to do what he can. Uh, Badage and Odoam, they're already back. Already. First Nexus Tower's down. And now Mad, they're on the Nexus. Oh, Shalka, not again. It can't happen to them again. Mad Lions walk straight through the front door and take the win over Shalka. Wow, Mad have to rush down mid lane in order to end it. What an incredibly tense game all the way to the end. Schalke chose to go for an engage rather than just focusing on rushing down the Elder. It made sense, it's understandable because Mad were face checking into Dark.